So last week on one of our videos, the homie John asked about investing in dividend stocks. This is a topic we've spoken a little bit on in the past, but today we're gonna go a little more in depth. You're watching Sekidur and this is Dividend Investing in Korea. Now before I continue, I'd like to remind you that this channel exists for general education purposes only and isn't meant to replace the legal or financial advice of a paid professional. Although we aim to provide a firm foundation on which you may build your knowledge, we encourage you, as always, to go out there and deepen your own knowledge in all things finance and otherwise. Also, we'd appreciate it if you could do us a huge solid, scroll down, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we'll keep the content coming in bunches. Alright, now let's get to it. Alright, so the goal of this video is to get us to a point where we're able to understand and use very basic metrics to consider the quality of a stock's dividend. Before getting into anything, let's do a definition of terms, because once we have a baseline, we can dive in a little bit deeper. So let's start with the keyword dividend. We're going to identify two main dividends, the first one being a common stock dividend. Now a common stock dividend is a share of a company's profits distributed directly from the company to its shareholders. This is most often done when companies have a surplus of profits that, they decide, would be of better use to be given back to shareholders directly rather than to be reinvested into the company. These payments happen on a regular basis, whether it be quarterly, biannually, or as is the case with many companies in Korea, annually. Unlike bond interest, however, companies can decide to change the amount paid out to investors or, in times of financial distress, cut them altogether. Secondly, you have a preferred stock. Now, a preferred stock dividend is more of a fixed dividend provided to owners of a company's preferred stock. In Korea, that's identified by adding U at the end of the stock's name. Now during stock distributions, preferred stockholders often receive a higher yield than that of regular stockholders, given that preferred stocks tend to trade at a discount to common stocks due to aspects of preferred stock ownership such as lack of voting rights and smaller growth potential. In general, preferred stockholders receive priority over common stockholders when companies do decide to distribute their dividends. All right. Now those are the foundational definitions, but I also want to get into a few more terms that you should know when looking at a stock's dividends. First is their dividend payout ratio, or in Korean, their pedang sangyang. Now this ratio tells us what percentage of a company's net income is paid out as a dividend. This is important to note because, as mentioned above, dividends are usually paid out when companies have excess income that would not necessarily provide more returns if reinvested into the company. So let's break that down a little bit with a thingy. This is Company A. Over the course of 2020, Company A earned 100 million won. To make it easy, let's say they have 1 million shares for a total earnings per share of 100 won. Company A estimates that of that 100 million won, 80% of it will be used for their COGS or cost of goods and services, leaving around 20 million won to play with. They also estimate that they'll need 10 million won to invest in new research and innovation and expansion of their brand. So, at the end you have 10 million won that's left over as unused capital that they decide to use as a 10 million won payout to shareholders for a dividend of 10 won per share. In this example, company A's pedang sangyang would be 10%, right? Because 10 million won out of 100 million won is 10%. Is this the kind of company that a retail investor might get into if they're looking to generate cash flow? Well, we'll get into that later. But for now, those are the most important points to note. DPR is the percentage of a company's earning that will be paid out to investors. Alright, next we have dividend yield. To calculate the dividend yield, we simply divide the dividend payment per share by the price of the stock. It tells us what percentage of a stock's price is paid back towards the share owner through dividends. So imagine that company A pays out a dividend of 10 won and the company is selling at 1,000 won per share. This would mean that the company's stock is yielding 1% because 10 out of 1,000 is 1%. Now this is more helpful for the shareholder than it is for the actual company because generally companies don't base their dividends on their stock price. It would be really odd for a company to do so because obviously volatility would change that on a day-to-day -day basis. So, a company's dividend yield could theoretically fluctuate over the years without them ever changing the tangible amount of money being paid out over time depending on how the market feels about their stock. Imagine for a second if company A's price dropped from 1,000 won per share to 500 won per share due to shareholder boredom, market panic, or for no good reason at all, 
But nothing else about the company fundamentally changed. The stock's yield would jump to 2% because, again, 10 out of 500 is 2%. For this reason, investing based solely on a yield is really not advised. Alright, in short, dividend payout ratios reflect a company's payouts to their net earnings, whereas dividend yields simply reflect a stock's return to investors when compared to the share's price. That's the basics. Now it's already been 5 minutes, so let's talk about dividend investing in Korea specifically. So how one goes about choosing stocks around their dividends is entirely dependent on their goals as an investor. As noted in an older video I did about dividend stocks, which you could watch in the top right hand corner right now, dividends are effectively the best way to get a consistent cash flow over time through stock investments. This is why it's common to find people switching from growth stocks to dividend stocks as they near their retirement. They aim to bolster their incoming cash flows as their employment ends and their income decreases. Thus, the development of a dividend portfolio often prioritizes quality and reliability of cash flows rather than seeking capital gains. That is to say, high dividends regularly come at the expense of premium growth. And this kind of makes sense if we go back to the initial concept of dividends. The larger a firm's dividend payout, the smaller the reinvestment into the firm's R&D. This is why, when considering firms with bigger payouts, they tend to be firms with mature and established businesses, a reliable consumer base, a predictable income stream, that type of thing. Some industries that you can rely on to pay dividends regularly are utilities, basic materials, oil and gas, and REITs. In Korea, you tend to see banks and financial institutions also paying out very high yields, but a lot of this is also due to the fact that they have consistently low price to earnings rather than having premium high dividend payout ratios. In any case, there is a case to be made for buying consistent dividend payers who have maintained their dividends over the long term rather than a company whose payout ratios or yields look great currently but have a spotty track record. Now to get a better understanding of this, let's look at some dividend ETFs and see what they're holding currently. Three we'll be looking at today are the Kosef, Tiger, and Arirang Kopedang ETFs. First, we're going to talk about the Kosef and Arirang because they base their holdings on the FN Guide Dividend Stock Index, which bases its strategy around predicted dividend yields of companies within the top 200 market cap companies on the market. Thus, if we compare the top 10 earnings of the Arirang and Kosef ETFs with the FN Guide Kopedang top 10 constituents, we see a significant overlap. Specifically, we see two telecoms, four banks, Hyundai Heavy Holdings, the OG tobacco proprietor in KTNG, and two companies best known for their constant high dividend yields, Sangyong, formerly Sangyong Cement, who underwent a capital reduction last year, and a stock we've talked about a bunch in the past, Merits Hwaje, or Merits Fire and Marine Insurance. With the Arirang and Kosef, we see some overlap with the exception made by the Kosef ETF who decided to pick up a significant stake in Taishin Chungkwan, whose aggressive dividend policy over the past couple years had yields near 10%. Alright, now we have to look at the Tiger ETF, which bases its holdings off the Kospi High Dividend Index, which includes the top 50 high dividend payers who have three consecutive profitable years, a payout of lower than 90%, and their market cap and volume are within the top 80% of the market. Here we actually see Taishin in the top 10 constituents along with companies like AJ Networks, JS Corp, and DB Financial who are significantly smaller in market cap when compared to some industry leaders on the FN guide like KT, Sangyong, CNE, and and KTNG. This is to say that although both indexes aim to find the highest dividend payers of quality and profitable companies, their strategies have led them to different conclusions, which at face value seems to be a difference between a preference for large market cap companies and smaller ones with high payout ratios and yields. Now, as an individual investor trying to build a dividend portfolio, what is the best option? Well, that once again depends on your strategy. The good thing about established mature companies with high and reliable dividends like the ones we found on the FN guide is that you can similarly just set it and forget it, buy in over time, and reinvest your dividends where appropriate. Large cap companies usually have bigger moats, larger cash cushions, and for that reason much more resilience in market downturns. Also, they require less attention for those same reasons, have more in-depth and long-term financial information available to investors, and are often more liquid and less volatile than smaller cap companies. Conversely, smaller cap companies with high payout ratios and yields, while great for dividend investors in the short term, also require more attention. If a smaller medium sized company's profits are being given back to shareholders rather than being used to bolster cash reserves, strengthen R&D, expand their operation, or otherwise improve the quality and resilience of the firm, then their dividend payment may be more unstable in the long term, 
And given the general lack of growth in situations like this, it may end up biting you in the ass if the market goes down, they have to tighten their belts and cut or reduce the dividends. And you, as an investor, have to either eat the lost dividends or eat the loss in your investment when you pull out your money and move it to another firm. I'm personally more drawn to the Charlie Munger mode of investing whereby I put my money in places where I can expect them to compound my wealth through both capital gains and investments over time. And I don't really do too much buying or selling out of positions so as to never interrupt the compounding process in companies that I believe in. As with anything, your allocation should be based off of your needs and strategy. Want a reliable dividend from a company you don't have to pay too much attention to? Maybe buy shares in a mature consistent dividend payer read 4-7% to consistently, with a nice but sustainable payout ratio of, say, 35-55%, to but given the Korean discount on established firms here, it would make sense to adjust that based on industry and could include payouts from 20% to 55%, depending. Now, are you actively restructuring your portfolio based on dividends on a regular basis? If you're really that active, then it may benefit you to buy into high ratio and high yielding firms for the short term, but make sure you don't lose track of them and stay up to date on their dividend policies. Personally, my dividend portfolio consists of 8 firms, a few mature consistent companies like Kiop, Merit Chaje, and Lotteri, which I let compound and buy the dip for whenever possible, as well as a couple flex spots which I'll switch up as ex-dividend dates roll by, though I don't consider myself much of a strategic dividend investor, so I'd say that's pretty conservative for others who base their entire strategies around them. For my dividend holdings, I really don't care about short-term price growth or expansion because that's not what I bought them for anyways. Long term, stay reliable, stay profitable, we good. Short term, dando. Heads I win, tails I don't lose much. In any case, when building your portfolio, it would benefit you to identify the strategy you want to use, the firms that fit your strategy based on their fundamentals, including, but not limited to, their financial health, profitability, cash flows, dividend history, and predicted dividends, and the percentage of your portfolio that you want them to take up. As with anything, there are a million and one ways to approach your dividend investments. So consider your options, consider your risk tolerance, and if you decide that bonds or high interest savings yielding 0.6 to 2% are actually more beneficial or more in tune with what you want to do with your money, then just go with that instead. Alright, that's it for me. Hope this clarified some things surrounding the dividends and dividend investing on a retail level. If it did, please consider sharing this with your friends, or if it didn't, share it with them anyway so you can flame me in the group chat. Corona cases are spiking again, so stay cautious, but otherwise, I hope you're doing well. Also, make sure to swing by the homies Hangang magazine and This Korean Life if you're looking for more diverse content about the Republic of Korea. Be easy, family.